winning the ECC championship back to back. Can't top it. Yeah, man. Yeah, babe. Um, our favorite sports memory would probably be our sophomore year when we beat Post in double overtime. It was uh, Nicole's assist to Kelly Cephalo for the winning goal. And it was really a great win. The feeling of, you know, running on the field and hugging everyone after. <laughs> <laughs> Come on! <laughs> my favorite uh, sports memory at Dowling has got to be uh, finally getting my first goal from Wesleyan this year. Joe. Real excited. Uh, my favorite sports memory has to be my uh, big goal against Dominican. That was my first goal as well. Mine was tackling him after he scored his first goal. <laughs> Mine was uh, scoring in overtime against Post my sophomore year. Uh, my favorite sports memory was me and Tim Canterbury cronked water bottles in the end zones of the Gillette Stadium. My favorite sports memory was uh, scoring the overtime game winner against Mercedes last year. My favorite sports memory was winning a national championship. Um, our favorite sports memory at Dowling College would be when we made it to the Sweet 16 of the NCAAs. Uh, I gotta say it was Robert Wesleyan um, at home when I threw it on the kids, you know, drove baseline, cranked it on them. Yeah. I agree. I think that's my favorite moment too. Yeah. But uh, now, all jokes aside, I think it was uh, being NYIT to go to the championship. That was a great moment. My favorite softball memory is winning ECC's freshman year and hosting regionals. Same. <laughs> well, my favorite is when Steph hit the scoreboard, finally. Same. <laughs> my favorite sport memory at Dowling would be making the, the Final Four in 2010 and going to Fall Festival with, uh, with our volleyball team. Definitely. My favorite sports memory at Dallas would have to be going to NCAA tournament. No, not the tournament. Yeah, the tournament. And playing in the championship game. Uh, probably watching third year rower Alexa Sulo flip a pair after she already knew how to row for three years. <laughs> Alexa Sulo. Definitely. Probably watching Mike Schnitz and. John Singh, freshman, flipped the boat yesterday. Flipped the pair yesterday. It was yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> that was I think meddling all around has been good in our races. Finishing a pair race with Schnitz. Meddling a pair race. You did? At Iona. <laughs> yes, we did. <laughs> First in uh, Connect Up this month. Uh, 2011, sophomore year, um, we went to Golden Corral and Joe was uh, eating healthy and thought it was smart to uh, get some tilapia. So uh, that didn't really work out too well for him or the people he was swimming with. Uh, my best travel story would have to be every away trip, uh, watching some HDTV with uh, Joe Canterbury and Tom Cleary, Just picking out houses which ones we thought were full and whatnot. That's, that was it. Uh, my favorite travel memory is pushing the beds together in a hotel room and making the mega bed and having the whole team in there. Uh, my favorite travel memory was last year, every away trip we would always tickle Kyle to the point that he could breathe. <laughs> <laughs> Mine's definitely rooming with Tim Canterbury because he has the best one liners on the team. He has a comedic genius. Mine would have to be uh, during the limestone trip, just uh, 40 something guys on the bus for hours and then we get to this gas station and we're just basically waiting outside. Like it looked like a riot was about to happen. <laughs> uh, my best travel memory is uh, one uh, one early morning waking up and having Steve over here just have me in a big old bear hug. Uh, my travel memory is uh, doing roll calls on the bus. Our best Dowling traveling memory was from last year when we went to Washington, D.C. Um, we felt so sick from dinner, we thought we were going to get sick all over the court. Then after the game, we got off the bus and proceeded to run all the way to the White House. And as we were running, some people started running with us and others were high-fiving us. <laughs> Definitely Forrest Gump style. Um, well, we were up at University of New Haven and um, we stopped at a gas station and Coach, Coach Hank gets out of the van and he has his daughter Sophie and uh, his father with us with us in the van. And he gets out and he leaves his phone in the cup holder. 
Um, Sophie takes his phone and is like, uh, Grandpa, why doesn't Daddy show the team the girl he's dating? So we all start, we all start laughing, and Coach gets up, gets back in the van, and we're like, Coach, when you go, why aren't you showing us the girl you dating? He's like, I'm not dating anybody. He's like, Sophie already ratted you out, and we all just started laughing. Uh, so we was on, on our way to UDC. No, we was leaving UDC, and so we were supposed to meet downstairs on the bus, on the travel bus, uh, at 12 o'clock. So everybody was on the bus. The coach asked, "Where's everybody at?" Greg and Dylan is not there, so they show up at least like 12:30, 12:40. They come down. <laughs> they act like nothing's going on. Coach is tight, turning red, <laughs> all types of colors. And so, <laughs> in the top it all, Dylan leaves his charger, so Dylan has to go right back upstairs and come back down. So, yeah. That was just so funny. To me. My favorite travel story is when the van broke down and we had to ride back in Jackie Hannon's car. My favorite travel story was when we had a rave in the, the van on the way back from the game and Jessie just kept bumping her head on the top of, <laughs> on the, top of the fan ceiling. Uh, my favorite travel memory has to be in Florida this year when we were having a dance party and we were trying to convince Coach Deb to Dougie and Walt Twerk Wednesday with us. <laughs> My favorite travel memory is back freshman year when Jackie Rogers was so <laughs> mad she had to drive us to the bathroom that she bumped the cars, the vans together. <laughs> she crashed the van! <laughs> Alright, this isn't a travel story, but it is a true story. Coach, I'm sorry. I know that we're friends now. Um, we are in the locker room getting uh, ready for a game. Coach is giving a speech on his favorite lawn chair. <laughs> she starts leaning back. I notice the legs are starting to cave in. <laughs> and I think to myself in my head, there's no way this is gonna happen. He leans back one more time, and three legs absolutely <laughs> shatter. And the recall crashes down to the floor. <laughs> I tried to contain my laughter, uh, but uh, tried hiding in my locker. Schneider caught me, tattled on me to coach. <laughs> And then the whole team started laughing. And my friend Sanchez took the blame right here. <laughs> Best travel story. Um, being in Texas and looking outside and we see a cop escorting us and we're like, celebrity superstars? I'd say that would be the best one for us. Mine's when we were, I don't remember what race it was, sophomore year, when we had the entire team, like 10 girls, all lined up under on the what is it? Oh, yeah. So we were all just like running, playing Rock Tree Bridge and running under everything and then we went out to dinner and we walked everywhere and it was just a mess and more fun than anything. I'd say Snapchat battles between bands or <laughs> filming a music video after a two hour ride turned into a six and a half hour ride. Uh, two weeks before the season, uh, Charlie Rodriguez, John Cruz, uh, both forgot their respective bowl buckets, so uh, we did not have any bowls to practice with, and we ran on the lacrosse field for two hours, nonstop, back and forth, in the rain. Asthma attacks were evident, and often uh, people <laughs> suffered, and uh, I'll never forget it. Um, worst punishment this year? Um, We're actually really mature and responsible people, especially yeah. myself. Don't really get in trouble. Unlike uh, some of our other teammates, don't want to mention names, but um, Jackie, Jackie Anderson. Anderson. Keep your mouth, keep your mouth. Yeah, thanks for all the extra sprints we had to do, Jack. You're great, babe. <laughs> Love you. <laughs> Not. Uh, my worst punishment as an athlete here at Dowling. Uh, Two pretty big ones stand out in my mind. Uh, one this year when we uh, lost the balls in the snow, the white lacrosse balls that we played with in the white snow. In the snow. <laughs> Didn't really match very we well. We would lose those. And uh, white snow. I think we ran about the snow kind what was of that, like 26. 26. 26. 26 one, two one, 20s. Yeah, 220s in the snow. It was kind of bad, but you know we got through it. The other one we, I can remember is uh, sophomore year. We go to the Farmingdale tournament, and uh, freshman goalie Joe Ward. No longer with us. No longer no. with us. Decides that right. he didn't. He didn't want to bring right, the balls. Peace. All on the 
100 and something lacrosse balls back with us. So the next two days we ran about 60, 110 yard sprints to make up for those. That was, that was a good time. <laughs> we usually run a lot, but when we're punished, we run more. Like this one time where we thought we lost the ball. <laughs> Coach really had it the entire time and told us to run until she said stop. And then she just whips it out and it's like, it's right here. <laughs> And then we ran some more. Um, it was definitely this season. Yes. Uh, coach just put us on the line and just ran us for about a good 45 minutes to an hour. Just sitting on the side, yelling at us, saying, Guys aren't talking. So we were, sprint. were sprinting up and backs, screaming, Come on, guys, come on, guys, for about 45 minutes. And then he still didn't care. You know? Yeah. Can't yeah. Really. Told us to keep running. We all are talking at the same time. Sprinting up and back as fast as we can. No, it wasn't good enough. You wouldn't like it. Who's crazy? Okay, the worst punishment we ever had to do was doing 6 a.m. sprint punishment for five days straight because we didn't make the best decisions um, <laughs> in the dorms. Same. <laughs> The worst punishment I've ever experienced was when we had to run around the gym uh, with a medicine ball on top of our head for 12 hours. At least it felt like that way. Well, the worst punishment that I ever experienced here was when we had to do 17s, and when your group wasn't doing the 17s, you did burpees on the side. Definitely should go to class. Just saying. Our worst punishment would be when we came back from Bentley, we won, mind you, regional champions. Came back from Bentley, and uh, we were supposed to have a day off. We really didn't have a day off. We came back on that Tuesday, and then we had to practice again on Wednesday. So, we had no day off. And we're practicing and everything. And practice starts off with cool shooting around. Then coach decides, we're gonna run. And I'm like, we just played three games, and he just ran the crap out of us in that practice. And we was just like so mad and everything. So that had to be the worst punishment that I can remember. Maybe she thinks I know something. Maybe, maybe. I would take Andrew Larson with me. I take Adam Baran. Uh, I'm going with Chris Mendoza. Um, Mendoza is very underrated in his hand skills, the cubbies in the dugout, the pitcher's mound. Everything he does it all. We all know that. I would probably take Lindsay, aka Linda. <laughs> she's like a biology major. She's actually really smart, so don't let it fool you. So. She doesn't look smart though. Linda, yeah. you'd be coming with me. And I would bring anybody but Megan Smith. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> I'd probably take Lance Swan, just because he's a handyman, I guess. You've got to have around. Uh, if I was stranded, I'd definitely probably take. Uh, the one Miles guy, Harvey, just because he's got a little redneck in him. I'm sure he can make shift a raft or something and get us out of there. Yeah, I'm taking Guy Harvey too. Uh, you ever been in our house? To, uh, he's taken down a few animals before, so. <laughs> oh, gee. So I think uh, he'd be able to get me food and I could just chill. Yeah, I'd take Guy Harvey too because I live with him. He's pretty much the handyman of the house, so he'll definitely be able to like, keep us alive for a long amount of time. Uh, I would take Guy too, just because he's a man of many talents. So he'd be able to get you in any bad situation you can't put in. I would take Sheldon Burns. <laughs> <laughs> Sheldon's always making things in our backyard out of ropes and trees and stuff. He's always making ropes. He's a kid to beauty. He's making things out of trees. I would probably take uh, Jake Smelly Harding because uh, you know, he's always down for whatever and. <laughs> we might not get off the island, but we would definitely have a pretty good time. <laughs> I would take Allie and Crystal because we probably wouldn't talk at all. We would just laugh the entire time. I would take Murphy because besides her awesome raps, I know she knows how to cook and I can expect a great meal every night. I would take Christina because she was my preseason roommate and she was a lifesaver during Hurricane Sandy. Hands down, I would take Liz Gorman because she's very resourceful and I know that if push came to shove, she would fight the natives for me. Uh, this is easy. Um, we both, Hands we're, down. we're both taking door. Hands down. But it's made a lot. And uh, the snails knows how to live. He knows how to survive. So definitely with him. Yeah, we probably should have some bugs and stuff. <laughs> I think we, we survived though. 
And Mac too. Shout out to Mac. He, I think yeah, it was, it was Mac. You were right there, close Mac. second. But uh, we gotta take Dora, man. Gotta take Dora, the Chanel. I would take Puma. Nah, she scared birds. <laughs> All right, then I'll just take her. She makes me laugh. <laughs> Okay, well, I'm not really sure who I'm gonna bring, but I know it's not gonna be Erica Nogan. She doesn't like when animals get killed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna bring Steph, because she's always smiling and she has nice hair. And I'm taking Jill, because she knows how to make everybody laugh all the time. <laughs> I take Brian Miller, because he probably has the lowest GPA on the team. <laughs> But if anyone is sick or something, he claims to know like the natural diagnosis antibiotics we should be using. So he just thinks he's much smarter than he is. So I'd really like to have that confidence with him. I'd have to take Tina Pan because she's funny as crap. And she'll always keep me entertaining. And even if we don't have no food and we're about to die, I'd rather die laughing. So that's who I'd take. Anyone but Travis Day. Literally any other person on the team except for him. I would take Alexis Sulo because she's an absolute fox. <laughs> I would take Alexis Hulo because she's an absolute fox. <laughs> Alexis Hulo. I'd bring Michelle. Thanks, guys. I'm not You're the fox. Only one. I'm a little bit close to both, maybe. I'd bring Gower. I'd definitely bring Lowy. Thomas Caputo. All right, there's uh, there's three stages to uh, to cap this year. This is stage one, the beginning of the year. Just don't worry, it's gonna be there. I know I know it's here, I know it's here, I know you're gonna get there, you're gonna get there. Don't worry, we're fine. There's a long season, there's a grind. Then there's two. Started to lose a little bit, got it later in the season. I don't know if it's there. I don't know. Do you know? We don't know. We don't who are we as a ball club? Because I I I I, I <laughs> where is it? Where's the team from the fall, the team from the win? All this, 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 I, I, I don't know where it went. Then, about two weeks ago when we started to win, we are who we thought we were. That, that's, that's what it is. We're starting to see the team from the fall. We're starting to see the team from the winter. The bunts, the hit and runs, it's there. I told you it'd be there, and it is. So Coach has a lot of things that she does consistently over and over and over again that we make fun of her for. Um, like I said. Like I said. Like I said. Like she said. Like she just said? But like I said. <laughs> <laughs> One thing that Coach does that may not be so funny, that we can laugh about now, is... <laughs> Again. <laughs> Again. <laughs> Again. Again. <laughs> Alright, so, uh, Coach Ball has a lot of phrases and things he says to us. Some of you guys might know, some of you don't. But uh, we're going to start off here with Phil. Joe, are you serious? You got to buy in. You can't be half pregnant. You say you're ready, but you're not ready. <laughs> Luke, are you kidding me? You're a college athlete. You got to be able to scoop a ground ball. <laughs> Boy, sometimes I swear to God, I swear you're French Canadian. <laughs> I swear, Canterbury, we just gotta leave you in a cave somewhere. You look like a bunch of house cat. You look like a house cat out there. Now, I'm gonna give you the day off, but don't go out like sailors on leave, okay? Now, in the eyes of society, you might not be fat, but the eyes of a college athlete, you're fat! <laughs> Morgan! Morgan! Relax on the touch! Sorry. This is Rick Cole at practice. Oh, really encouraging stuff. Oh, you, Molly, you, you guys are gonna uh, want to do whatever you want to do. Uh, I don't understand. I don't, I don't get it. You know, run, tell you to you know, run 30 and uh, run, run, run for a run, and you guys want to run whatever you want to do. Uh, get in the locker room. Uh, I, don't, I don't know what else to do. I don't, I don't get it. I don't get it. Uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't just don't get it. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Greg, get the, get, get, the, get the look off your face, Greg! Get off your face! Okay, one thing Coach Dad does not accept is not having a good tuck. This is unacceptable. So what you gotta do is get in there like this and get in there good. 
Because when we're going to play hard, you got to dive. You don't want dirt getting down your spankies, you know? <laughs> so you get a good tuck, ladies! <laughs> so this is coach on game day. Okay, ladies? Good! Add a girl! Add a girl! Down the barrel! Down the barrel! Right here! Right here, ladies! Come on! Let's go! All right, boys. It's a great half out there. Friedel, you're playing great net. Pagano, great heart, son. Well done. Everybody else were really playing great. And Pierce, you are an absolute disgrace as a man. I put you on the right. Your distribution is garbage. I put you on the left. You make me look like a jerk. Pretty soon, son, you're gonna be sitting next to me on the bench. All right, boys, let's go get him. Guys, what are you doing out there? I remember this one time in 1463, John Claude Van Damme. Gave me a perfect through ball. I played it to the main, and we won the national championship. You gotta have heart out there. I don't know what you guys are doing, but if you keep this up, we'll be running at practice tomorrow, and you can guarantee that. It's absolutely right, Steven. Absolutely right. I'm running through. I'm running through. I'm running, coach. Sage, you gotta cut. You gotta cut. Stunting. You gotta cut. Stunting. That's all I got. <laughs> Coach Alexa. Okay, do one more. <laughs> Snap Coach Alicia. Uh... Guys, I need to see this piece. And I love you. And I love you. <laughs> FSU on our legs or have buddies that we write the numbers on our legs each game? And yeah, you play for your buddy basically for each game. And something that um, I took from a couple of the seniors before me, before every game I write a quote and I stick it in my sock and after the starting lineup is called I'll read the quote in the huddle and just try to get everybody pumped up and kind of keep that goal of that quote. <laughs> That's really it. Uh, Pre-game ritual, uh, go to front of the bagels, two bagels, one pump and a gold toasted with butter, egg toasted with cream cheese, go back to the house, eat it, grab a Gatorade maybe, uh, John Mayer, Pandora pumping, play the game. Uh, I like to retain my stick, and I also have a uh, lucky coin that I put in my right sock. I've had it ever since high school. I do whatever I can not to cut my hand. One time, <laughs> one game is that I cut it, but I try to yeah, can win them all. Uh, I have to slick back my hair. Uh, it's got to be like fully slicked, or it's just it's just not the same. <laughs> I, I slick uh, back too. And then I probably just bump techno on my iPod for pretty much the entire duration. Uh, I wear my lucky shirt that I've had ever since uh, high school. I wear that on the uh, our game day shirts. I slick back the hair too, uh, show type for the time. Team slick back. Yeah. And uh, just smack around the boys in NHL before we go to Xbox. And just bring in coffee and a couple things. I always change the color of my fingernail polish. Um, it has to be a different color than the team that we're playing, and it can't be the same color to match it in a row. Duncan! <laughs> Booty popping music. Well, Jill's gotta make me look fierce with that eye black. And Schmiel has to sing to me all the time. And then I gotta know it's Jersey time! Jersey! Every time we play a game, I will pray in Spanish. 
I have no idea how to train English. <laughs> and then before walking the field, I will make sure to put my right foot first. Taking the speakers in our locker room and just blasting music. And it's funny because you see our team and you just hear all this hood music, two chains and all types of stuff. We just going hard and dancing and stuff. So that's a pretty game for us. As a team, we huddle together, talk about what we're going to do, how we're going to do it, and launch. And then once we get to the start line, we all reach back and hold hands and then just do a yeah, yeah, we all hold hands too before each race. <laughs> <laughs> and then we race we and just go. <laughs> we uh, tell each other not to screw up. And then sometimes we high five. We just reach yeah. finals. A lot, a lot of singing in our bowl. Whenever we lose, it's, it's Alexis Sulo's fault. <laughs> um, hey guys, there's probably some uh, sad music playing right now, and uh, you're expecting this to be depressing. But uh, don't let a day go by. Uh, enjoy your friends, enjoy your teammates, and uh, en enjoy the time you have here because it goes by a lot quicker than you think. Yeah, like Danny said, just uh, don't blink. It's going to be the quickest four years of your life. There's no better time, so enjoy it while you're here, especially freshmen, sophomores. Just enjoy it as much as you can. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what to say. A couple words that I just really want to tell my team is that I'm really gonna miss you guys. I just can't picture my life without lacrosse. Just... Nick! Don't worry, I'm not going anywhere. I'll be back for field hockey. Vinny, I know you're really excited about that. <laughs> um, on more of a serious note, we just want to say thank you to our teammates. I know personally this year has been super fun and I made new friends and you guys are like family, so no matter what happened this season, I still had fun and I wouldn't trade it for the world. Um, there's no other team that I want to end my career with and Jackie, don't miss me too much. <laughs> Love you guys! Bye guys! To the boys, uh, thank you for all the memories you guys have given me. Uh, I'm going to have to pass the grace down one of these days to someone. It's a pretty big responsibility. I don't know who can handle it, but you know, I'll find that person and uh, I'll be there next year cheering you guys on. I love you. Thank you. Uh, thank you guys for everything. A uh, good bunch of buddies on the team and uh, just keep mucking and grinding, boys. Uh, thanks, guys, for all the memories. The past four years goes by way too fast, so just enjoy every moment that you have with the team. I love all you guys. It's been a great year. Thanks for letting me be part of the team. I'll be back for future years to come. Yeah, I love you guys. Just remember you're here for a good time, not a long time. And it goes by fast, so uh, make it worthwhile. Just uh, thank you guys for being good friends. Uh, <clears throat> had a good time. Just goes by fast. Enjoy every day that you have to be out there. Yeah, just uh, enjoy, enjoy it while you can, guys, because like they said, it goes fast. Make the best memories you can on and off the field with your brothers, your teammates, and uh, be hungry for another championship. Just uh, one last thing here. If uh, James Francis Tucci could please stand up. James, you can stand up. Stand up. Um, as the former grace giver, I would like to hand over the torch to you. I think you would be a great guy given grace. And, uh, that's it. I hope you guys have a wonderful season next year. Um, please stay healthy and enjoy your new coach. Although our season was a bit rocky this year, I'm very thankful for the experiences I had with you girls and I wish you the best of luck in the future. Also, one more tip, always beat Bridgeport, always. We just wanna say thanks for being such amazing teammates. We've had an incredible four years here and make the most of it because it goes by fast. Just have fun, enjoy the moment. I remember I was a freshman, now I'm about to graduate, going to the real world, I guess. Yeah, I mean, uh, we took a huge step in the right direction, fellas, and um, couldn't get over the hump. But, I mean, next year you guys got another opportunity to come back to a good core. So, just lead by example. Do what you guys gotta do when just finish your job this year. Enjoy the moment. Yeah. Enjoy it, fellas, because it goes by quick. It goes by really quick. But, just do what you gotta do. You know what you gotta do. It's a beautiful thing. Beautiful thing. Play every game like it's our last, because it goes by so fast, and it's crazy. I just have to say, never give up because you really never know what's going to happen and what you can do.
Um, have fun and play your hardest every chance you get and make memories of everything that happens because it goes fast. Um, when you step onto the field next year, just have fun. Play it like it's your last time you're going to be there because it really does go by so fast. And play hard! No drinking in the dorms! No! <laughs> Guys, stay healthy. Uh, we had enough injuries in the past couple of seasons. And um, good luck next year. Uh, my message will be, guys, stay in shape. Make sure you guys make the tomorrow's round on the time. That's all. Message to my teammates would be, guys, good luck. Have fun. Four years flies by. Make sure you're playing in the off season so we get this program back and running. Yeah, same as Sean. Uh, just have fun, enjoy your time, because before you know it, it's over and you got two bum knees to show for it. That's about it. Good luck, guys. Toka, toka. To my girls. I love you guys. I'm so proud of everything that we did this year. I love y'all from the bottom of my heart. And next year, y'all about to dig in everybody's tail. We coming back with a vengeance. It can be done. I don't care what anybody say. They like, you lost the core or whatever. Y'all can dig in everybody but next year. I'm proud of y'all, I love y'all, I miss y'all, but I gotta go, cause I gotta do my own thing. But get money, you stay getting money. Bye. Bye guys, it's been fun. Keep this program going, I'm trying. Uh, Natalie, if you're watching. <laughs> Natalie. We'll miss you. We'll miss you Natalie. Only Natalie. Never gonna see you again, Natalie. 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 Our dates. Natalie. Natalie Ventrino. Natalie. I'll miss you every morning. Good in luck, my room. Yeah, Virginia. We're gonna miss our sleepovers. I'll never see you again. I'll miss you sleeping on my couch. I'll miss you stroking my oar. <laughs> Smiling down the river. I'll miss our morning races to practice. Love you, Natalie. Natalie, Natalie and everyone I hate else. And everyone else. Miss you. Everyone we'll miss everybody else too. I love you. Yeah. Yes. Good luck with Maybe everything. Maybe Alexa. Just keep rowing strong. <coughs> It was fun being your senior leader, not your captain. <laughs> senior leader too. Charming yeah. here. And with, with our second year senior leader. Sorry I yelled at you, but I'm really not. It was Sorry fun. I cared too much. Time. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Work hard with everything. Play hard. Thank you all for, uh, for a wonderful run here at Dowling. Um, I'd like to thank the administration, student athletes, student athletes and just remember although i won't be here just keep building at building champions in athletics academics community and life because i know i will be over at iona and i'll still be a golden lion at heart we just want to uh quickly say thank you to rick cole for everything that you've done for our program and supporting us and it's really it's been a blessing to play for dowling and we want to say thank you for looking the way you do and being that one person to look at when we have one person in the stands. Thanks! Uh, our best memory of uh, Rick Cole would have to be when he just gave us a nice little kind of pre-game speech on the bus um, for our national championship game last year. It was really good, so, uh, you know, just we all just want to say uh, thank you. Thank you, Rick. Rick. Thanks, Rick. Thank the best story I have about Rick Cole is this one time I was walking to class and I waved to him, and all of a sudden he just chucks up the deuces, and I'm like, what are you doing? He must have thought I was somebody else. Thank you, Rick Cole, for being an awesome athletic director. We want to wish you the best of luck at Iona. Rick, um, thank you, man. You got you gave me the opportunity to come to this school and uh, get a good education for four years, so thank you for everything that you do for us. I mean, not just the men's team, but all athletics as a whole, and just good luck with whatever you do, man. I know you're going to uh, Iona, so. Congratulations on that and keep working, man. Keep working. Right. Congrats. Hey, Rick. Thank you for everything that you do for Dowling. And also, thank you for every time I see you. you always, you're always you always so positive about my hitting, saying 25 this year, 25 this year. Um, we just want to send you a big congratulations and good luck in your future with your new job and everything. And I'm sure everyone there will love you as much as we do. Thank you. Thank Thanks. you. Thanks, Rick. My best story about Rick Cole would have to be this winter break when I composed the sweetest possible goodnight text saying that 
I didn't want to get off the phone and I love you so much, good night with a red emoji heart. Obviously it was meant for somebody else, but I sent it to Rick instead. Um, had to be one of the most embarrassing moments of my entire life. Rick, thank you for being an excellent AD and uh, good luck at Iona. Uh, yeah, Rick, thanks for uh, always being around. I feel like at uh, different schools you might not even know your athletic director and it was pretty easy to find you if we needed to, so uh, good luck at Iona. Good luck. Good luck, Rick. Rico, I just want to thank you for my backpack. It's the best backpack ever. I hope you don't think about taking it. You're not going to take it away. I'll trade you in my old one. But thank you for that. And just knowing you, it's been an honor. It's been a pleasure. You're a true family man. Uh, we watch everything, and uh, you're a good coach. You're just awesome. And congrats on the job. Do work and have fun. Get that mood up. All right. Deuces. This is my Rick Cole impression. Please don't get too upset with me. <laughs> Alright guys, if you want to be successful in life, you have to balance three things. You have to balance self, relationship, and professionalism. If you want to know how to do this, you have to do one simple thing. Look at me. I'm 42 years old. I'm great looking. I have a job now. I have a job I own. I have two jobs. And I balanced it. I look back in life and you know what I've done? I've done everything. I've done all I wanted. So you want to aspire to be me.